good morning all welcome for to join our conversation this is another in a series of conversations on the subject of cyber career intelligence so we're we're interviewing and talking to industry experts about what they see going on in their part of the security world and today we're very happy to have Heather Bearfield here good morning Heather good morning thank you for having me Fred so Heather has a uh, kind of a unique picture of information security. She works for a firm called Blum Shapiro. And they're, I guess, originally an accounting firm. And so her perspective, I thought we'd start this conversation by asking her a little bit about what is her role and what does she do? And then we can get into how does it connect with traditional information security and what kinds of backgrounds um, you might need to get into sort of her world of information security. So Heather, could you kind of talk to us about what you do at Blum Shapiro and what your role is? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I'm a partner at Bloom Shapiro in our risk advisory practice, um, specifically in the IT division. So that really entails a lot of IT regulatory um, engagements, a lot of you know, assessments as far as general controls are concerned around applications, um, obviously, this whole COVID-19 remote workforce thing has had a huge impact on us. Um, we're making sure that companies are transitioning securely and safely to the remote workforce. Um, so we also talk to them about, obviously, educating them on security awareness, um, ensuring that their networks are properly set up, that you know people are not falling for certain phishing attempts or things like that that's going on right now, which is you know very rampant in the industry right now. Um, anytime there's any sort of crisis, you know, hackers of the like try to take advantage of that and prey on, you know, uh, users. So um, whether it be, you know, anything with HIPAA regulations, it could be GLIBA, it's, you know, SOC reporting, Sarbanes-Oxley, you know, anything that falls under the IT umbrella, we'll really, you know, take a, a close note to and assist our clients in. Interesting. So when you talk about IT risk, Heather, is that broader than traditional information security or uh, is it, is it uh, which is the bigger umbrella? Yeah, it, it certainly does go deeper than that. So from the regulatory perspective, you know, it, it does align very much with any sort of traditional IT risk that you, it, you would think of. Um, but then we really drill down into the security side. So we act as hackers, right? So we'll go to a network and try to penetrate the network, identify any vulnerabilities that they may have. Um, we do it from social engineering via email, via phone calls, physical, walking around the workplace, seeing what information that we could obtain and questioning people and, and the like. So, you know, it, it really is a much bigger umbrella than what you would just think as traditional IT. Um, a lot of times people think it's more of help desk and can you fix my application? But that's, you know, certainly not the business that I'm in right now. Um, although those services certainly are offered. Right. So when you when you do an assessment, do you stay involved with the client and help them in any way to see that things got done correctly? Or do you uh, is that a periodic audit or what what's the role? What role do you have or does your firm have in sort of making sure things get done right? Sure. So as a CPA firm as well, we do have independent standards that we have to adhere to. So if we make recommendations, um, if any of those we follow through and implement on, we obviously can't come back and assess them the following year. That would be a breach of independence. Um, so what we typically do is that we'll make assessments, we'll give them recommendations as far as how they can fix some of the vulnerabilities that they may have that works for their organization. Um, and then we follow up with them periodically to make sure that they're tracking as far as implementing those recommendations. Um, there are certain times, obviously, where if we do assist them in doing those recommendations, we then just can't do the assessment on the back end. Um, but we typically like to just keep tabs and make sure that those they are being implemented and we'll offer them some recommendations as far as if there's a partner firm that we work with to help them implement if they don't have the resources on staff. So, I see. So in that type of role, what um, for people that might be listening that are looking for new opportunities in the security space or either students or um, people from other parts of information technology that want to move into the kinds of work that you're talking about, what sort of skills should they have? I guess there are 
technical skills and non-technical skills. So talk about both or whatever, you know, whatever comes to mind as being critical for uh, being part of the industry that you're in. Sure. So I have to admit when I came into this, this, the IT space, the IT risk world, I had no idea really what I was working, you know, walking into at that point in time. Um, However, you know, whenever we have requests for proposals or work that's being pending, you know, certifications are certainly a huge thing. So on my team, my team actually was mainly comprised of people. And again, obviously I'm a little bit older, not, you know, today's age, but um, they were all people that didn't have a traditional cybersecurity background through college. Um, They earned it via certifications and those sorts of things. But those credentials are extremely important when we're going out and trying to win work. Um, People want to know that they're working with qualified individuals. So either the undergrad and the masters in some sort of cybersecurity space is, you know, will certainly give everyone a very much a leg up as far as getting a job in the future. Not that the people are hurting for cybersecurity jobs right now. Um, You know, everyone's looking for qualified candidates. Um, But on top of that is really the certifications that they can obtain, whether that be a CISA, a CISM, a CISSP, um, CRIS, there's now, you know, masters in cybersecurity and new credentialing coming out in the cybersecurity world. So all of those things are extremely important to employers um, when they're looking at that prospects or candidates for their firm. Right. Are there, there's a whole bunch of security certifications that are out there. Are any that come to mind as the top two or three that people should get? Um, you know, so okay. there's CISSP has been out there for a long time and yeah. CISM. Are there any that come to mind as the top ones that people need or should have? Sure. I, th- I mean, I think the baseline is the CISA, Certified Information Security Auditor. Um, but as you move forward, it really depends on if you're working at a you know, traditional public accounting form, or if you're working internally for an organization. Um, as far as if you're working internally for an organization, I would definitely think, you know, the CISSP and any other cybersecurity specific certifications would be top of mind. Um, if you're working at a, a CPA firm where, you know, you're really working across all different types of industries and you're working on just, you know, very heavily on controls work, the CISA and the CISM would be of utmost importance as well. Great. So, when you bring in new people into your group, do you expect them to be kind of all ready to go and have all the skills they need? Do you offer them training in the way you do things? Or how, how do people sort of get into an organization like yours in terms of what skills do they need? And then I guess a follow on question is how do, how do you keep people up to date in terms of, um, new skills and things like they're obviously going to get on the job training but do they do you offer people outside training uh to keep up sure yeah absolutely um you know i think there's a couple things to your point is one the generation that's coming through right now is definitely more technical than certainly i was when i was coming out of college as far as just everyday use of technology and what's out there um my main criteria are the desire to learn Um, the ability to be a hardworking individual and the dedication to the job. Um, I believe that I can teach anybody anything. um, And there's a lot of on the job learning that definitely occurs, you know, so you can read something out of a textbook, you can do case studies, but once you're actually thrown in every single situation, whether it be a data breach or, you know, just the assessment of an IT environment at an organization is different. Um, And we certainly offer outside training. Um, There's a number of um, external learning groups that, you know, we encourage all of our employees to go to. Um, And again, those certifications is also an aspect of that where they have to study for those exams. It's, you know, the whole ball of wax as far as the criteria that we're looking for, for people to understand. But, you know, the -the on-the-job, hands-on training is is certainly the most important. I think that people learn the most there. Um, You know, coming through with these degrees, the building blocks are there and it puts people, you know, 20 steps ahead of someone who doesn't have that formal education in it. Um, but at the same time, you know, learning the different environments, learning the different industries, learning different situations, all of those things, you know, those leaps and bounds for, for individuals learning, learning the trade. So talk a little bit, of, people talk about soft skills a lot. I don't think they're necessarily so soft and they're not necessarily so easy to learn, but how, what are the, most critical soft skills that people should have or should acquire 
uh, in working in a, in a role similar to yours? Sure. So I think in the IT world, people always think, you know, we work in these closets in the back room with no windows <laughs> and are hidden. Um, but, you know, our clients are trusting us to ensure that their data is protected. So those soft skills are paramount, I think, way more than it is even in the county and our tax industry, just because they're putting so much trust in us to ensure that we know their environment is secure. So, you know, knowing where, you know, what their family's names are, what their grandkids' names are, what, you know, they like to do as far as hobbies, activities, you know, really knowing them so that you create that sense of trust and assurance with them is, is extremely important. Um, I mean, if you ask anybody that's ever worked for me, that's the A number one thing, you know, make sure you're on time, make sure that you know about your clients and invest that, you know, even if it's five minutes, ask about the picture on their desk, you know, get to know them. Um, because again, it's so sensitive, the information that we're handling and the criteria that we're, we're talking about, um, it just creates that bond and that sense of security for them as well. And it, it is extremely important. Yeah, I think that, so there's a whole, you, you want to make sure that the clients trust you, right? That's super important. And so there's a whole bunch of things that go into creating that kind of an environment. So that's, that's extremely, uh, extremely important. I, uh, so I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that because it's not just one soft skill. It's kind of a whole impression that you need to create. So as you said, yeah, if and you're that, late, yeah then- it's kind of a differential, right? So you want to make sure that anyone can kind of run a free road tool against, you know, executing a vulnerability assessment or a pen test, but you know, the delivery of the results and how it really affects them and going the extra mile to make sure that they understand that you're really taking into consideration their environment and how it impacts them um, really goes far with with individuals. Yeah, that's very important. It, that's extremely good advice to keep in mind. And then you talked about getting to know your customer, right? Knowing something about them. How about um, what kind of businesses do you serve? And are do, you, are do you focus on certain businesses or how does that relate to, can you jump around from a healthcare company to a financial services company or do you stay in particular verticals? Yeah, sure. Um, Excellent question. So we are very industry agnostic. We do have individuals that specialize in certain verticals, just so that they know and are very well aware of the regulations such as HIPAA and high trust and everything, you know, associated with the healthcare world. Um, We do have people that specialize in financial services, you know, any type of industry, we do have people that spend their time there. However, being industry agnostic is very critical as well because we've seen so many times that something that worked at one of our financial services clients actually will work at a healthcare client. And it's something that is, you know, kind of out of the box thinking because everyone from the healthcare world is only associating with healthcare CIOs or CISOs or those individuals. So they're all dealing with the same applications, the same type of issues. And then someone from the financial services world, you know, isn't in tune with what's going on with the healthcare world, but their fix actually might have a huge impact in the healthcare world. So, um, you know, we handle things very differently. We work with just even startups and they need much more handholding, right? So we wanna make sure that they feel safe, that we're helping them um, through every step of the way and thinking of things that they potentially aren't thinking of. And then we work with, you know, Fortune 500s, 100s, you know, and they need us just to validate that their controls are actually in place and get on that certification as far as any of the regulations are concerned. So, um, you know, from a CPA accounting world perspective, you really get a insight into all sorts of industries. So it's a, it's a great place to start your career. And, you know, I started at one of the big four firms and it, it really gave me that springboard to see everything. Um, and there's been many people in my career that either have worked with me or for me and they've gone into industry because there's some, you know, a certain industry that they've been exposed to that they really love and that's something that they want to continue. So, you know, it, it certainly is, I have no regrets. It's been a, a great ride. Yeah, that's great. Are there any industries that are particularly exciting or new or um, hot growth industries that come to mind in terms of what you guys are doing? Sure. I mean, any industry right now because everyone <laughs> went remote work, right? <laughs> so COVID kind of... <laughs> was a springboard for everything. Um, however, you know, biotech, biotech's a, a huge one right now. Um, and, you know, it, a, again, pretty, we've seen all over the world we're getting calls from any type of industry, you know, higher end, you know, to, you know, obviously the industry you're in, you know, that's been something that people are 
you know, really taken into consideration, okay, what are the security concerns? What are the risks from remote learning? You know, how are people getting into meetings? What information are we sharing? Are we sharing anything that another, you know, um, university could potentially capture and, you know, use for their program? It's a lot of that proprietary information that is being shared virtually now um, or to a much greater degree than ever before. So, you know, there's a lot of concerns and every industry has their own and it's just a, it's a crazy time right now um, during this pandemic because there's just things that people have never seen or thought of before and you have people that have been working at a desk for 35, 40 years and all of a sudden they're having to work remote and they're getting, you know, emails coming in or they're leaving things on their desk that they printed out with sensitive information on and these are all concerns from a security perspective that companies have to to understand and have to think about okay how do i know they're not printing out secure information how do i know that they're going to be online via vpn or some secure channel um, when they're accessing all this information and they're not downloading it to their personal laptops you know so it's 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 certainly been a whirlwind and you know we, we are just in the beginning of it <laughs> yeah thank you very yeah it is kind of a, a crazy time so do you have any closing thoughts for new graduates or people trying to get into the field in this highly unsettled, uh, we don't know exactly what's happening next week. Any thoughts for those people? Um, my biggest thought is congratulations and you're <laughs> in a wonderful field right now <laughs> to be in. Um, times are exciting. So if you're, you're graduating this field and you're one of the people that just wants to continue to learn and grow, I mean, you couldn't be in a better field right now because it is ever changing. You know, there's new breaches out every single day, new vulnerabilities, um, things that I've never seen before are occurring, things you don't expect to happen are happening or you can't predict. So um, it's exciting. You know, there's a, there's a great future in front of all of them. Um, and it just depends, you know, where you find your passion, you know, whether it be on a regulatory side from IT or where there would be, you know, really trying to you know, hack into companies and understand, okay, let's help make this place a better, more secure environment. Um, you know, it, it's the boundaries as far as what you can do are endless. You know, there really are no boundaries for them. Um, but it's it's a very exciting field and it's one that's, there's a huge growth potential in right now. So, um, no, I'm just excited to see, see what's next. You know, we're always surprised, but um, it'll certainly be interesting. Very cool. Yes. Thanks so much. Yes. Unsettling means lots of new opportunities. For lots people. of opportunity. Correct. Yeah. So <laughs> thank you very much, Heather, for sharing all your thoughts and thank you all for listening and please uh, follow us again next week when we bring another thought leader into our conversation and have a great afternoon, everybody. Excellent. Thank you for having me.